In this video, we are going to start with the native data types that you can program with in VL, which are displayed and manipulated through so called IO boxes. Here is an example of an IO box for a simple number. It can be set by either right clicking into it and dragging the number up and down, and it is also possible to double click into it to type the number manually. Also, notice the little grey rectangle next to it that appears when hovering with the mouse. This is the label for the IO box, which you can type a title into. It is also the area where you can right click to reach the configuration menu, in which you can apply certain settings like the minimum and maximum values and the display size. The dot to the left has an input and an output, so everything that is going in from above will be updated in the IO box as the flow of data in general is from top to bottom. If the data types of two I.O. boxes match, you can create links from top to bottom or the other way around. As already said, this I.O. box is configured to work with whole numbers, so-called integers, and there are a few more basic data types I would like to discuss in this first video. To place a new I.O. box, you need to click on the entry in the Node Browser and select the data type afterwards. There is also a shortcut for opening the I.O. box menu by double-clicking with the right mouse button instead of the left. If you've been programming before, you might have heard of some of these types, for instance, booleans, floats, integers, or strings. And in the course of this tutorial series, we will also be dealing with the RGBA color data type, vector2, and vector3. Knowing about these different data types is really important in VL, because the language is type sensitive. Each input and output pin of the nodes is assigned to a data type and we can only make connections between nodes of which the data types match. The first data type we will be looking at is the boolean. A boolean is a data type which represents two states, 1 or 0, or mostly referred to as true or false, and when selecting a boolean from the node browser it is possible to choose between three different I.O. boxes. Bang, press and toggle. They all represent a boolean which is either true or false, but they all behave differently. For instance, the bang can be right-clicked, which sets the output of the I.O. box to true for exactly one frame of the application. Therefore, it can be used as a trigger for an action that is connected below and that should be executed only once. When we connect another bang underneath, you can see that booleans can also be received by the I.O. boxes. So the lower bang displays its value when the upper one is triggered. On the contrary, the press stays true for as long as it is clicked with the right mouse and the toggle switches between both states every time it is clicked like a light switch. All three types can be changed anytime from the configuration menu and it totally depends on the situation which of these types you should use and how you would like to control and display your application. Besides the integer, there are four more I.O. boxes which represent a number data type. Float, Vector2, Vector3 and Vector4. While the integer represents a whole number, the float contains a floating point and the vectors represent two, three, and four dimensional floating point values. Like the integer, also the other number IO boxes can be either set by double clicking and typing into them or dragging the value up or down while holding the right mouse button. When hovering the vectors, there's also this additional value appearing that can be used to set all the containing values at once. It is also possible to configure floats and vectors to have a higher precision in the configuration menu. And you can use the shift key while dragging up or down to make finer adjustments. These get even finer if you also hold down control. The RGBA data type represents a color NVL. It basically consists of four floats which are displayed conveniently as a solid color in the I.O. boxes. These numbers represent the hue, saturation, value and alpha of the color. And by using the right click and drag gesture, you can manipulate the value which sets the brightness of the color. In order to show a color which is not only black or white, you need to hold control while dragging up and down, which sets the saturation of the color. Afterwards, you can right click and drag left and right to set the hue. The alpha can be set by holding shift while dragging up and down. Also, it is possible to set the color by typing in a hex code or a color name, for example, red, 
blue, magenta, and so on. Finally, there are two more data types that should be included here in this first overview, the string and the path. While the string is simply an I.O. box to use text in your patches, the path is an I.O. box that lets you access the file system on your computer by right-clicking into it. Note that it has to be configured to either point to a file or a directory, which you can do in the configuration menu. That's it for now. In the next video, we're going to look into nodes and their workflow in combination with data types in VL.